I am Eddie Micah Jr. and you are welcome to the show. Well, I'll say the first case recorded uh, in the Deutsche Welle, DW, uh, was the boss himself, the director general. There's always the fear, I'm still going to work. I'm taking public transportation in Berlin where I go every month, at least a week per month, to uh, go and present DW News Africa. That has been put on hold. Hi guys, welcome to our channel, Abuna Kabine TV, AK TV. This is behind the front line, telling the untold stories of storytellers. You already met our guest for today's episode, but let's get to know him more. Welcome back, guys. I have Micah with me on Zoom. Hi, Eddie, Micah Jr. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Catherine. It's been a long time. How are you doing? In ages. I'm blessed that I can see you glowing. I can see it's you're the doing light. so well. Light. It's Which the light. light? <laughs> <laughs> well, you have very good lighting in the room then. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> anyway, Micah, I know as things have changed a lot in Germany, but can you tell us how it's been and what's new? Oh, well, after months of lockdown, at least two months of lockdown in the, the different states, you can see clear signs that um, things are reopening. You know, there's a lot of relaxation of the lockdown. So, of course, restaurants are opening. Um, um, a lot of these uh, small shops and generally all shops are opening, which... I should say it's a bit scary, Catherine, because if the signs of coronavirus is anything to go by, then it almost seems like a lot of people are not paying too much attention to, to you know, being extra careful like they used to be. But it's also understandable, you know, lives must go on, uh, businesses must open, and the economy is going to be shattered if if it's not open soon. So you can clearly see at the parks, you see a lot of people there, even those still by law, there's not supposed to be more than two people from the same families together, you know? And some restaurants maybe have a, a sort of a, a divided uh, glass uh, thing in the middle to prevent uh, people from talking on each other. But the effort is there, but it's, 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 not, it's not safe, in my opinion. But I guess this is the challenge that many countries are facing, Catherine. Uh, do you save lives or do you get the econ economy back on track? which will save everybody maybe in the near future. So that's, that's the dilemma. But overall, yeah, things are definitely opening and relaxed uh, gradually in Germany. Mm, well, if um, WHO says COVID is going to be with us for a little longer, then we can only learn to live with it and life must definitely go on. But tell us about work. How has it been in all of these, having to go to work while people are home and then the risk of uh, other colleagues bringing it around and all that. How has it been? Well, first things first, I think we all really have to put in a lot of effort to prevent the spread of COVID-19, as we have uh, been trying to do. It's almost impossible to 100% defend yourself, right? But of course, my work, for instance, at Deutsche Welle, uh, they put in so many different measures to help protect uh, the employees. So, for instance, in Berlin, where I go every month, at least a week per month, to uh, go and present DW News Africa, that has been put on hold. Not because the show was not doing good, as we all know, it's, it's because they had to reduce the number of programming uh, to, to allow social distancing at work. Okay, so now I've lost a little bit of cash, Catherine, so now I can't go to Berlin because the show is, is, is on hold now. Uh, when you come to Bonn, where I'm speaking to you from, Bonn, Bonn is where we normally do radio and social media related stuff. Um, and here, normally you're about, what, three, four in the office working together. Everyone has something to do. Now, there are, there are some systems that work much better at work. So, again, to allow social distancing, many people are working from home. So, when I'm producing and presenting the radio shows, 
uh, with, with, with my co-host, then, you know, it seems sometimes a lot of work gets on you because you have to do a lot of things from the office. So it, it's been tough and challenging, but, you know, we have to do what we have to do as journalists. And then we, especially during these times, we, we have to sort of kill two bears with one stone. So it's been challenging, but it's been a challenge well accepted to, to, to get going. Mm. So right here in the UK, people have been asked to go to work if they can or work from home if they don't feel too comfortable in the work environment. How has it been for you at uh, DWTV? Have you faced any uh, incidents of some colleague or staff member having the disease and you having to work around them and all that? Well, I hope not. Officially, we've not recorded <laughs> any cases in my department yet. It's, it's, it's interesting, though, I have to say, the first case recorded uh, in uh, Deutsche Welle, DW, uh, was the boss himself, the director general, uh, which everyone was like, whoa, that's like leadership by example. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, and so, but, but I think that Deutsche Welle overall took very, very uh, active measures, okay? So, of course, when he tested positive, uh, the, he, he went straight into quarantine. Um, all those that he had been in contact with, of course, also were put into quarantine uh, to ensure that it doesn't spread. Um, so as I'm speaking to you now, there is uh, no active positive case with Deutsche Welle. Uh, so I have to say that you are right. I, I think just like everyone who is working in a place with normally a lot of people, there's always the fear. I'm still going to work. I'm taking public transportation. I'm still in touch with people at work. So as much as you're putting on your mask and you're, you know, not really touching and all, there's still ways you can contact it. But not to, you, not to cut you, Michael, but this boss, were you working directly with him? <laughs> no, I'm, I wasn't. I'm a bit interested <laughs> in that part because it's uh, quite scary. So were you in direct contact or in your line of duty, were, were you close to him? I feel like you're trying to ask this question so that you find out if I've been tested positive or not. Catherine, I was not in direct contact with the <laughs> boss. <laughs> Micah, not at all, not at all. I just want to know how the feeling was because I've spoken to some journalists who just went out to speak to people suspected to have COVID-19 and they faced a lot of stigma from colleagues, friends, and family. That's why I just want to know how you felt having to work with a boss who, uh, who was positive. Mm. Well, um, thankfully, uh, I wasn't working directly under him. Um, so I guess that made me a bit more relaxed. Like, phew, uh, at least <laughs> I'm a bit safe. But, you know, the, the whole thing with, with this is that you never really know sometimes until you get tested, right? So, because we do know that someone may have it, but may not even be showing the, the, the symptoms. So, so, I think that's what, as, as, as a worker like me in the building working, I'm always thinking, hey, what if I already got it? Or what if even my colleague who I just saw sneezing has uh, COVID-19? You know, what if I have it and I come home? you know, and, and I give it to whoever is at home. So there's always going to be those thoughts that make you a bit like, watch out, watch your back, you know, but you can only do the best you can, Catherine. Yeah, so let's talk about the protocols. Uh, forgive me, but I just want us to stay a little bit on, on this sure. issue, yes. So when your boss was tested positive, how did it go? The, uh, talking about the protocol in infection control and all that, was he asked to go home? Did he self-isolate? Did he go into quarantine? How did he go? Yeah, straight away, he was put into self-quarantine because that's, that's the rule also, that uh, once you feel the symptoms and you test positive and it's uh, not that serious, then you have to go home, self-quarantine, and make sure you're not in contact with anybody, which is exactly what he did. But not just that. The people that were around him, there was the contact tracing. So they find out these number of people, and then they also self-isolate. In Deutsche Welle, there's a team, there's a, there's a COVID-19 response team that uh, has been set up very early when corona uh, came up. And so they are also looking at all of these and ensuring that their con- uh, contact tracing is going well and all of that. So, so these measures were put in place to make us all in high, in high alert to, to prevent us from getting it or to prevent it from spreading. Mm. And 
can you describe the general atmosphere in the office to me because sometimes it feels like there's some heaviness in the air how, yeah, yeah, <laughs> that was definitely, how the whole feeling was i mean there was definitely some heaviness Kathleen. I, I think the, the very first day I, I was in the office and all of a sudden i hear one of my colleagues say hey there's been a first case uh, in deutsche Welle." i'm like what <laughs> um i mean look it was inevitable it's it's almost impossible that that would a company like Deutsche Welle, a very international organization with so many hundreds of people coming in and out, that it wasn't going to happen. So I was surprised, but not as much, you know. Um, so yeah, it was it was quite uh, heavy when we realized that it's the main boss himself. But we actually made fun of, a bit of it that you know leadership by example, but also leadership in the sense of showing us how to deal with it when one test positive. So we all learned from that, and and from that moment, we were even more on high alert, prevented from spreading. Mm. That's very good. I mean, it's good to know because that also saved the situation of stigma because if he had to come around, then people will be forced to, I mean, shy away from him, which brings us to this issue of stigma that is posing a big affront to the fight against COVID. But just before we wrap up, tell us how reporting on COVID-19 in Germany has been because in other places people are calling for journalists to be given the opportunity to show um, um, people who have been infected with the disease on TV, probably to put some fear in people who think that all these things we are talking about uh, are false and do not exist. Well, Kathy, I think that has happened all around the world. Uh, uh, journalists at some point, of course, uh, have either gone to the, the healthcare centers, hospitals, and have seen some patients uh, supposedly suffering from COVID-19. But, you know, the issue you just mentioned is, again, something that in most countries people are questioning. You know, and it's the same here in Germany. Uh, there's been different, um, should I say, uh, protests, yes. Um, some could have maybe easily turned into riots. People think, say, hey, take us out of lockdown. This is not as serious as you're making it seem. Uh, the numbers maybe have been bloated here and there. So there's been, there's been those issues here, too. But in terms of reports, uh, of course, there's been some journalists that have been to the hospitals. They've spoken to uh, some people that are suffering uh, in the hospitals, and and and, and uh, you know they've they've been they've been learning more about the disease from the doctors, you know, and all of that. But I mean, the question is, at the end of the day, how many people can you actually show suffering from the disease, sort of invading their privacy if they don't want to come out? just to prove a point that this disease is real. I think that if you're still uh, watching now and you don't believe that COVID-19 was real, then I don't know which universe you belong to. Uh, you can talk about a lot of other issues, but there definitely has been the disease killing people, spreading three times faster than the diseases like their normal flu and, and others. So it is real, and, and I think many overall recognize that, but there's still quite a number, just like everywhere else, that are questioning you know, if how much of a big deal this was and it was just the flu because, you know, in, in, in countries like the UK and the Germany, flu is flu and then COVID-19 is literally a type of flu plus other symptoms. So it's been a bit challenging uh, with, you know, when it comes to proving to people that this is real or not. All right. That's it, Micah. It's been great talking to you. Yep, it has been great. Uh, I like the hairstyle, by the way. Keep it going. Well, thank you. <laughs> oh, <I> bless it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, Eddie Micah Jr., a journalist in uh, DWTV in Germany, has been talking about his personal experiences working in the midst of this global pandemic. This has been Behind the Front Line. Thank you so much for watching. See you same time next week. Stay safe.